Thanks for tuning in to Dirty Teeth and welcome back to the channel. Up next is another installment of my Tour Divide Bikepacking Prep Series. As we all know, things can get sideways in a hurry when you're out in the wilderness and issues that are inconsequential in the real world can become ride-ending problems out in the field. Let's head inside. Taking care of your body and being adequately prepared for emergency and survival situations is a must. One of the questions I get asked the most is how do I tend to saddle sores in my rear end? What magical creams or ointments do I use to keep saddle sores from forming and what do I do about ones that have already popped up. This is definitely a dilemma for all riders and I'll touch on that in a moment. But first I want to take you through my emergency survival and first aid kits. These can truly be the difference between you getting out of a sketchy situation and riding back to civilization or being forced to hit the panic at the disco button on your spot tracker. You don't want to tap like the survivalists on alone unless it's absolutely necessary. Then I'll finish with my hygiene kit including all the goodies to keep your rear end as healthy as can be. Sound like a plan? Great, let's do this. First up is first aid. There's a lot of subjectivity in this arena. I find myself wavering back and forth, trying to strike a balance between having a kit that's lightweight and manageable while still having everything needed for a crisis situation. I'm definitely no EMT, but I know everything I keep in my kit, what its purpose is, and how to properly use it. If you're unfamiliar with any of the items in your first aid kit, I suggest you master them now because the learning curve gets pretty steep once poop hits the fan. If you're looking for one-stop shopping for a backcountry first aid kit, I'd go with the Ultralight series from Adventure Medical Kits. You might consider the five or seven if you don't wanna think about it too hard. These kits are fantastic because they're comprehensive yet minimal, and they come with a lightweight waterproof stuff sack. Either of these should get you out of the proverbial woods and back to safety. Since I tend to geek out and overanalyze everything, I purchased a three and a nine. This way I can mix and match everything I like from both and then stuff everything into the compact pouch that came with the three. This way I can customize my kit from trip to trip based on where I'm going, duration, etc. But this is what I took for the Tour Divide. 10 yards of athletic tape. Whether it's to keep some gauze in place over a cut or to support an abundance of overuse injuries, having some tape that can stick to your skin is a must. Achilles tendonitis is one of the most common ride-ending injuries suffered by divide riders, especially in the first few days with all the hike-a-bike up north. I recommend connecting with a physical therapist at home and learning how to tape yourself up ahead of time. Some people also prefer to bring K-tape or kinesiology tape, and that's a great consideration as well. On another note, sliding your cleats all the way to the back of your shoes or dropping your saddle just a couple millimeters can make all the difference for Achilles strain or knee pain. Next up is an assortment of band-aids and bandages. I carry two of each, butterflies, knuckle bandages, and small, medium, and large band-aids. I switch out the generic band-aids that come in the kit with band-aid brand tough strips because they stick better and they're more durable. When you're carrying a minimal kit, it's especially important that your band-aids stick through all conditions. I carry a small two-inch ace bandage with a Velcro closure. It can be great for sprains and strains, including your Achilles, by giving support and pressure to reduce swelling. It can also be invaluable for strapping items to your frame or your seat bag or plenty of other funky uses. Gauze is important as well, so I carry a two inch roll as well as individual two by two, three by three, and three by four inch pieces. It helps blood to clot and lacerations and won't stick to the wound. Warding off infections is critical, so obviously keep your gauze in the sterile packages until you need them and redress as necessary. I carry three packets of alcohol wipes. Cleaning the affected area before applying gauze or a bandage is the first step to avoiding infection. Quick tip. They can also be used to clean a contaminated brake rotor or to get goopy sealant out when you're trying to affix a tire boot. Just don't slice your finger on the brake rotor while cleaning it. You wouldn't do that, would you? I carry three packets of triple antibiotic ointment, which is basically Neosporin. It comes in handy to accelerate healing on minor cuts and burns. I can usually handle mosquito bites pretty well, but it's nice to have some relief from those larger, itchier spider bites and the such. For this, I pack three bite and sting relief wipes. I'm super paranoid about blisters because they can get painful enough to cause even the strongest riders to scratch from the Tour Divide. Once they occur, you better stay on top of them because they don't really have a chance to heal. For blisters, I carry traditional mole skin as well as thicker mole foam. If you catch a blister early on, mole skin or a band-aid is great for reducing friction. But if it gets bad, it's nice to put a raised mole foam cushion around it for extra relief. It's also great to use antibiotic ointment and a band-aid across the top for an extra layer of protection. The AMK kit also comes with a cool tweezer tool for splinters or tick removal or other potential uses. Pack them. The last component of my first aid kit is a pair of nitrile gloves. I've mentioned these in other videos because I like having them for bike repair or for a next to skin layer in cold or wet weather, but I like keeping another clean, easy to access pair in my first aid kit. Just in case I need to work on myself with grimy hands, I won't risk infecting the wound. 
Whether it's an unforeseeable injury, extreme weather, or a fluke bike mechanical, you need to expect the unexpected. So I wanted to touch on a few extra emergency and survival items that are worth their weight in gold. A fire starter. You need a reliable and easy way to start a fire. On the Tour Divide, I carried an AMK Firelight Sparker and some pieces of Tinder Quick. The sparker is easy to operate one-handed and is good for about 5,000 sparks. If you carry a camp stove, it's a good way to light it regardless of wind. The Tinder Quick is waterproof and windproof, will light with just one spark, and each piece will burn for about two minutes. Another option is to carry a regular old Bic lighter with some sections of tire tube wrapped around it. The Butyl tube is a great fire starter. It takes a little time to light, which is why you need a flame and not just sparks. But once it's going, it burns long and strong. If you carry old school chapstick or petroleum based lip balm or A&D ointment, which I'll talk about in a minute, these are also great fire starters. If there's ever a time when you're soaking wet and hypothermic and you need to start a fire in a damp forest and you're wiping your chapstick or your diaper cream on your spare tube and it saves your butt, then you owe me a beer. Next is the importance of being bear aware. The plethora of grizzly and black bears on the northern portions of the divide route warrants some serious consideration. When traveling through bear territory, being loud and making your presence known is your best defense. This can keep you from startling a bear and potentially having an uncomfortable encounter on the trail. For this reason, many riders utilize bear bells. Personally, I can't handle the endless jingle jangle. I have a loud Industry 9 hub which is obnoxious to some, but on fast descents you can hear me coming from a mile away. On flats and climbs when it's quiet it's way easier to sneak up on animals. So if I'm in bear country or my spidey senses are going off, I'll sing to myself or hum or sometimes I'll let out a little shoo. Others carry whistles or bear horns. Whatever your flavor, I just want you to be extra bear aware when traveling down the grizzly highway and remember that riding loud and proud is a good thing. In the rare instance that you get in a standoff, some bear spray might be a nice item to have. But you need to treat it like a gun. What'd you say about my mama? Don't bother carrying it unless you know how to use it and are prepared to use it. If it's buried in your pack and you don't know how to get the safety off and you're just gonna fumble around with it, don't bother bringing it. Also remember you're not allowed to fly with bear spray, but they do sell it at a couple of shops in Banff and they stock up during the summer tour divide season so you shouldn't have any trouble securing some. I highly recommend practicing with bear spray ahead of time. You can buy an inert can or dummy spray and work on your skills at home. I carried bear spray mainly to appease my wife and I chucked it after leaving Wyoming. I also carried 30 feet of paracord. If you're forced to camp in bear territory, it's useful for hanging your food in a tree. It can also be helpful in securing a makeshift splint or MacGyvering in other emergency situations. I can't stress enough that the most important survival items aren't available at REI. Your brain, attitude, confidence, and resourcefulness are crucial. By staying calm and having intimate knowledge of the route, your gear, and your body, you're already setting yourself up for success. That was kind of doomy and gloomy, so let's steer away from it and talk about our health and hygiene kit. You're going to smell like a homeless person and look like a homeless person at some point on the tour divide. You'll find yourself wondering, why are people staring at me funny? Until you check a mirror at the gas station bathroom. That's why. Give up on aesthetics and regular grooming, it's just not going to happen. It's enough just to focus on the contact points between your body and bike and keeping those healthy. Also, with the crazy food and all the extra sugar you're eating, it's super important to brush your teeth and wash your mouth out regularly so your teeth don't fall out when you get home. Chapped lips can be very painful and make it very hard to eat. I'm a big fan of Dermatone products, so I use their lip balm, which has 30 SPF protection. A reminder from earlier, if you use a petroleum-based lip balm, it can be a great fire starter, and so can Vaseline. I'm totally content with my fire starting options, just throwing it out there. For some block, I carry a four ounce tube of 50 SPF Dermatone. If you watched my Tour Divide clothing video, then you know I have pretty much my whole body covered and protected from the sun at all times. I only need to apply sunscreen to my ears, cheeks, nose, and neck. Dermatone stays potent even after a couple hours of sweat, so I only have to apply it a few times a day. I lasted the whole Tour Divide on just one tube. Quick tip, if you run out of chain lube, sunblock can get you out of a jam in the short term, just saying. I normally use an electronic toothbrush and love it. Maybe there's a way to charge it from my Dynamo Hub. Okay, I'm just kidding, joking. For a toothbrush, I just took a freebie I got from the dentist and cut it in half. It's also worth noting that there are some pretty sweet foldable travel toothbrushes on the market. For toothpaste, I just take a travel size of Crest. If I have my choice, I like the gum detoxify and deep clean. Otherwise, I'll take anything that's minty just to con myself into thinking I have fresh breath. Toothpaste can also dry up bug bites and saddle sores if you don't have any acne cream. Dental floss is a must for me and I'm really picky. I only use Oral-B Glide Floss. You can get these in a travel size, but the regular roll comes with way more floss and isn't that much bigger, so that's what I take. 
Keep in mind that you can also sew with dental floss if you run out of thread or you don't carry any. Just in case you need to repair a ripped stuff sack or a torn sidewall. With the mass quantities and questionable quality of the food you're going to be shoveling down your gullet, your potential for stomach issues and sickness is amplified. Here's the medication I carry to combat sickness. You've got to carry an anti-inflammatory. I normally don't take many meds or drugs. But on longer rides, I tend to have an achy back and sore joints after hours in the saddle. On the TD, I fought through numerous bouts of knee pain as well. Advil liquid gels worked wonders and I'm very glad I packed them. I also packed Imodium AD soft gels in case of sudden diarrhea. These are a must bring on any bikepacking trip, especially if you're not packing antibiotics. Diarrhea will dehydrate you and sap you of all your energy, especially if you can't keep down any food or water. I'm a proud owner of Johnson & Johnson stock, so I go with the name brand on this one. Antibiotics are a great idea. I chatted with a doctor friend of mine before departing on the divide and he filled a couple of prescriptions for me. He okayed these for me, but obviously check with your doctor to make sure you get the right antibiotics for you. I'm sure I'm butchering the name, but I carried metrodizinol for gut issues and bacterial infections. I also brought Augmentin, which is for respiratory and skin or soft tissue infections. Luckily, I never had to use these or my Imodium, but I was happy to have a plan just in case. Remember, it's all about setting yourself up for success. Okie dokes, we made it to backside care, which I'll just call my butt kit. This might be the single most important aspect of your hygiene. Saddle sores can make your life miserable, and if neglected, can definitely end your ride. Don't kid yourself, you're gonna get them, everybody does. If any divide rider tells you they never had issues with saddle sores, they're lying. The goal is to keep discomfort to a minimum and not let them spiral out of control. Here's what I bring. The first step in saddle sore defense is chafing cream. Use ample amounts of this to keep friction to a minimum between your saddle and your derriere. Everyone has their preferences and there's a zillion options on the market. Some people even make their own. For shorter trips, I use old school chamois butter. You can get in a big tube or smaller packets like these that are good for a couple of uses. But for longer trips like the Tour Divide, I bring diaper rash cream. Specifically, I like A&D ointment. I find each application lasts longer than traditional chamois cream. It's a little thicker in consistency, and I find it provides a better barrier to friction. I carry the four ounce tube and use it generously, but they also have a smaller option as well. As I mentioned earlier, A&D ointment is petroleum based, so in addition to putting out fire crotch, you can also start an emergency fire. <laughs> Two for one! That was pretty bad, I know. Antibacterial wipes. So useful for cleaning everywhere on your body, but especially great for keeping your backside fresh. I keep a stack of these in a Ziploc bag so they don't dry out. Before you bed down for the night, take off your chamois and give yourself a thorough cleansing to remove all your chafing cream. Embrace the cold, tingly feeling and let yourself air out overnight. If you notice any saddle sores or feel them forming after you clean yourself, you'll want to put acne medication on the trouble spots. Benzoyl peroxide is the ingredient you're looking for when you're buying acne cream. You can think of your saddle sores as pimples and the benzoyl peroxide will help them dry out and heal faster. The final ingredient to round out my butt kit is antifungal cream. Just in case your wipes don't do the job and there's a fungus among us, you'll be glad you brought some. For this, I carry clomitrazole. It's a small one ounce tube. I've never needed it, knock on wood, but yeah, bring it. With all these weapons, you should hopefully be able to keep your saddle sores at bay. So there you have it. That's everything I carry for first aid, survival, health, and hygiene. Seems like a lot of stuff, but it's actually pretty minimal considering how miserable you could be or even forced to end your ride without it. Now for your favorite part, weighing everything I just discussed. I'm guessing it's gonna be about three pounds. What do you think? Once I subtract the weight of the container, it comes to 767 grams or approximately 1.7 pounds. I was actually pretty far off. That's a lot better than the three pounds I guessed. Anywho, thanks for hanging out until the end. If you haven't seen my other Tour Divide videos, I'll put a link to the playlist in the description below. If you found any useful tidbits in this video, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. As always, I look forward to your comments and questions down below. Until next time, ride bikes, drink beer, live happy. Thanks so much for squeezing dirty teeth into your busy schedule. Please help us reach more people and ensure you receive new videos by giving this video a like, subscribing to the channel, and clicking the notification bell. Until next time, ride bikes, drink beer, live happy.